Hey, greetings everyone. Glenn Calloway from The Basement. It is Wednesday afternoon as I record this. Uh, tonight we have our live chat starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, tonight we're going to talk double albums. The ones we like, the ones we think would be better as a single album, maybe has some filler, a bit bloated, whatever. Just the whole gamut of the double album thing. So... Um, today, I wanted to show a couple of uh, interesting new albums that I got yesterday and from Discogs. I hardly ever buy from Discogs. And I'm going to do a whack-a-mole with CDs. So, excuse me, Mazzy, for stealing your thing. I'm random, pull, whatever you want to call it. First, I want to talk about this band. This was... I, I, I picked up an album that my buddy Steve from All the Worlds of Stage chose as his favorite album last year by a band called The Wolf and and uh, I listened to it immediately bought it I think it's great it's got a real uh, soulful rock and bluesy feel it really sounds like one of those uh, old soul review kind of feel to it and uh, when I showed it on my channel one of the loyal viewers I don't know his first name, but he goes by J.W.G. Moore, so I imagine it's Mr. Moore, said, you really need, should listen. If you like The Wolf, you should listen to a band called Vintage Trouble. So I went on, I always do, When I, I appreciate when you guys recommend stuff, and I always go to Spotify and check stuff out. Um, Vintage Trouble, I listen to a, a assortment of songs from their few albums that they have, and just freaking loved it. And uh, I went on Discogs and found this one at a fairly reasonable price. It's their third album. It's called One Hopeful Road, Vintage Trouble. Um, really, really good album. So it starts off with kind of a real heavy slide guitar thing. And you think you're going to get like a heavy... To me, I thought I was going to get like a heavy blues album. But uh, first impressions are wrong. It turns into quite a soulful freaking record. It's uh, These guys... I would say have like a 50s, 60s soul sound mixed in with some blues and some rock. And uh, it's not like a jammy album at all. Very uh, good, just good straight songs. Um, it was released in 2015. They've got a few albums out, but give this a listen. Vintage Trouble, One Hopeful Road. Loving this album. Next, uh, still on my Rory Gallagher obsession, and uh, I picked up another one at the same time I bought this. Actually, I, I always check and see if the guy's got anything else for sale to get shipped with it, and I found a Rory Gallagher album called Notes from San Francisco. Now, this is another one that was released by his brother posthumously. Um, the first side has some songs that I have on other albums, so I'm sure it's just a compilation of stuff. Um, and then side two, it, it's all studio stuff, and side two is live. And oh my God, the live on this is like heavy, heavy Rory. Wow, he's like, I think he's, uh, it's it's like Jimi Hendrix heavy. It's like, it's just real scorching guitar, man. And uh, so if you like that, you'd probably love this album. But uh, yeah, Rory Gallagher's great. I'm just so happy I'm revisiting him again. So I'm going to go over behind me here. I'm going to put my headphones off. I'm going to pull out 12 CDs. Last time I did this, it was a bit of a train wreck because I pulled stuff on my shelf I haven't heard for years or never heard before in my life. So we never know what's going to happen. Let's just check and see what happens here. This could be funny. Give me a minute. more 
just in case I got something whack. Okay. I pulled, I pulled 14 CDs just in case I pulled something really weird. Now, should I try and rank these like Larry Graves does? I could go through them quickly here. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Okay, that's probably going to be the least. Oh, I got some cool stuff here. Okay. Now well, let's just do them randomly. Eric Clapton's Unplugged. This is probably one of his most popular albums. Um, I don't like the the uh, acoustic version of Layla as much as I like the electric version of Layla. And I think, uh, isn't Tears in Heaven on this too? And a uh, tragic song about his loss of his tragic son. Yeah, Tears in Heaven. Um, Running on Faith is good. San Francisco Bay Blues is good. This is actually not a bad, probably... I bet you this is, uh, besides Nirvana, this is probably the most successful unplugged album in the whole series. So, Eric Clapton. I'm kind of back on a Clapton kick. Love this album. This is Procol Harum Live with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. They had a hit off this album, actually, Conquistador, which was on their first album, but it was released as a single off of this live performance. And um, this is an original master recording mofi but not from the original masters because it's silver on the top it's like second generation or whatever the original masters are always gold just in case you didn't know that um love this freaking album uh conquistador wailing stories a salty dog all this and more and in held twas i that that is my favorite procol harem piece of work there off of the shine on brightly album and, uh, yeah, terrific, terrific album. Jerry Garcia, Acoustic Band. These guys are amazing. I recommended this to Sam St. John because um, he wanted to kind of get into Jerry. This is Jerry doing um, almost like bluegrass traditional songs. It's uh, all acoustic instruments. And um, this one was recorded at the Lunt Fontaine Theater in New York City. Warfield Theater, and it's called Ragged But Right, and um, they do like songs like Trouble in Mind, Deep Ellen Blues, Rosalie McFall, um, Good Night Irene, uh, Drifting Too Far From Shore. It's, uh, it's a really good, really good acoustic album if you're into that stuff. Greatest guitar player on earth, Ry Cooter, or my favorite. I shouldn't say he's the greatest. He's just my favorite. This is from a radio broadcast live at the bottom line, 1974. Uh, I would think he is probably uh, promoting the Paradise and Lunch album at this time, which is my favorite Ry Cooter album. And, uh, but he's also doing songs that would appear later with... Uh, on uh, Bop to You Drop, like uh, Crazy About an Automobile. I can tell by the way you smell would have been off of uh, Get Rhythm. Um, there's not really a lot of any songs off of Paradise and Lunch, which is funny, because it's right around the same period. Uh, excellent sounding record. Bruce Springsteen's Greatest Hits. I don't know why I have a... Bruce Springsteen's Greatest Hits. I have all his albums. and But uh, maybe this one had uh, songs on it that I think at the time weren't on anything else. Streets of Philadelphia, Secret Garden, Murder Incorporated, Blood Brothers. I think we're all uh, just put on this. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. It's a great comp. If you just want a Springsteen Hits album, this is a great one. This is interesting. Bob Marley, Legend, but it's the Deluxe Edition. It's all um, uh, uh, re, a remastered album and then uh, the remixes. So the songs are really like longer or they're just different. It's really a different listen than listening to the Legend album, which I think pretty much everyone has in their collection. I quite enjoy this, actually. 
Los Lobos, one of my favorite Roots bands. This is called This Time. Um, pretty good album. Not one that I would say I play a lot. But um, I don't know if there's such a thing as a bad Los Lobos album. And there's some great tracks on that. I'll leave it at that. The Smile. This album came out 2022, I think. Um, it is the guys from Radiohead with uh, somebody else. This is actually not a bad album. I'm not a big Radiohead guy. Just I just never got into them. I'm not slamming them at all. Um, but uh, this uh, kind of uh, piqued my interest in that I, maybe I'm missing something, not listening to Radiohead. But The Smile was a... I think it, it got a lot of good reviews. It's not bad. <clears throat> One of the great Canadian bands... And my favorite album of theirs, Tragically Hip, Road Apples. This album just freaking rocks, man. And it has uh, little bones on it. Um, what else is on it? I'm having a hard time seeing because of the light. Uh, bop, 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 bop. Cordelia. Uh, there's a ballad on here somewhere. Is there not? Three Pistols is a great song. Oh, Long Time Running. That's a great tune. Um, excellent album. This was their first album. I never considered their first album. Their first album to me is up to here. This is the, the next album after that. But uh, excellent Tragically Hip album. Elton John, Honky Chateau. This is an SACD. Um, <clears throat> my favorite Elton John song is on here. Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's. I'm not a big fan of Honky Cat. I never liked that song. But there's some other good stuff on here. Rocket Man's on here. And um, it's not a bad album, but like Honky Cat. I know it was a hit, but never did it for me. My favorite Peter Gabriel album and probably his biggest selling album, So. I just love this album. I mean, every song. Sledgehammer was such a great tune. And um, In Your Eyes is on here. Don't Give Up, the beautiful duet with uh, Kate Bush. Incredible. Great, great album from... Peter Gabriel, the album that's just, uh, I, can't, I can't figure this album out. It's the only album I've ever owned that I just can't decide whether I like it or hate it. Can, Tag Omago. I know I lent it to Larry Graves in the CD exchange, and he loved it. I, I'm just so torn, and, and I've put it on the shelf for a while. I should revisit it because, uh, I don't know. I just got to figure this out. Uh, it's, what an album. It's, if you've never heard this, listen and let me know what you think. I got uh, two more. I'm a huge fan of this artist, Japanese jazz pianist Hiromi. Um, I've told the story many times before about being turned on to her when I went to see Martin Barr in a, in a, in a little club in Toronto, and the guy sitting beside me said he was going to see this woman by the name of Hiromi the next night, and I'm going, who the hell is Hiromi? And I went home and, and checked her out. Oh, my God, she is just so full of energy, and she's so talented. And she has her own band, plus she plays with Stanley Clark, and uh, she's done stuff with Chick Corea. I mean, she is just a phenomenal talent. Um, this is a trio with Anthony Jackson and Simon Phillips on drums. So uh, pretty much anything by Hiromi I'm in. I've got her entire catalog except for her latest album called Wonderland, I think, which I'm still trying to find. So um, excellent, excellent artist. And one more, my favorite Dire Straits album, Making Movies. I love this album. My favorite Dire Straits song is on here, Romeo and Juliet. Freaking great track. And uh, yeah, that's it. That didn't work out too badly. I actually knew what I was talking about. Holy crap. Um, tonight, please join us for the live chat. We'd really appreciate it. If you haven't heard these guys, check this out, man. It is good. I get the feeling it's going to show up on an Elman exchange coming up pretty soon. Um, take care, everyone. See you later.